welcome to escapefromtrarkin.com and our 10 questions with segment. This is our very first edition and this week we have the lovely Lisa Stocker who played Trina in It Takes You Away from series 11. The premise of this series is we ask 10 questions to our guest and hopefully they will answer them. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's get down to it. These are our 10 questions with Lisa Stocker. and everyone at escapefromtrarkin.com. Uh, I'm so excited to be on here. My name is Lisa Stocker and I played the character of Trina in episode 9 of season 11 of Doctor Who um, and oh it was fantastic. So we're going to get right to it. I'm going to answer uh, Rich's questions, questions now so let's see how we go. Lisa, question number one. Were you a fan of Doctor Who before you were cast in It Takes You Away? Yes, I was a fan of Doctor Who prior to being cast. Um, but for some reason, my family, I can't get them into it. So I would have to watch by myself. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it very much. And I was particularly excited because it was the first female Doctor Who. So... This might be something Rich will ask me later, so I'm not going to say too much about that. Okay, question two. Now, one of the most talked about parts in It Takes You Away was the frog on a chair, which was really a sentient universe. When you first watched this episode, what was your reaction to this? <laughs> this is such a good question because... Question three. Oh, hang on. This is such a good question because... I don't think I've ever had anything be so disgust of something that that I was in. And also because my character is the character that is the solid tract who then turns into the frog with um, Sharon's voice as well. So uh, this whole thing was, was, was quite unusual. And when I read the script, I have to say, I really was curious to how they would do it. I was kind of expecting a giant animatronic kind of frog kind of like do you know those frog bins at school uh for some reason that's what i had in my head so when when we saw on set this tiny animatronic frog on a white chair <laughs> that was quite interesting but to be honest i don't know how they would have resolved that particular part of the story it was just it, it was cool because everyone talked about it and that's what you want on tv so, um, yeah, I stand with the creators that this was a good decision. Question number three. Would you be in Doctor Who again? And if so, what would you like to play? Oh, yes, I would like to come back again. I felt like Trina barely, you know, um, just got to grips with the character and off she was gone into being a frog. So... I would love to come back. Um, maybe, you know, because the solid tract isn't dead. And so Trina technically could come back or I could come back as something completely different or be in a costume or, you know, prosthetics. You can do anything in Doctor Who. And I think that's what's so exciting is that you, there are no rules. Uh, so, yeah, I'll come back as anything. I really don't care. I loved being there and I loved working with everyone. Now, question number four. You are the Norwegian voice of Elsa in Frozen and Frozen 2, otherwise known as Frost and Frost 2 in your native Norway. Now, that part led you to joining other Elsas from around the world on stage at the Oscars. What was that like as an experience to sing on stage live at the Oscars? Oh, wow. Um, I was so honoured to, first of all, to just do the, the role of Elsa in, in my in native tongue in Norwegian was such an honour. I've dreamt about being a Disney voice my entire life, particularly a Dis Disney princess. And now I'm a Disney queen. So that was just 
a, a dream come true in itself. And then when the Oscars came around and to be chosen as one of the eight out of over, I think, 45 or 46 languages was just such an incredible honor. Um, and we were all so humbled to be there, all eight of us. And we're very good friends now because obviously you bond a lot during such an experience. And it really was everything that you imagine it is and that you hope it should be. Um, we were treated like royalty from the beginning. You know, we were flown business class. We had our own suite at the Regent Beverly Wilshire Hotel. We were spoiled with gifts. Um, but the, the, be the best thing of all was really working together with these extraordinary women. We got to work with Elena Menzel. We got to work with Aurora. We got to work with Bobby Lopez, who co-wrote the music and lyrics with his wife, Kristen Lopez. So, and, and also we were directed, uh, conducted by Rich, gosh, can't remember his last name now, but just, just the most incredible people, legends in music, legends in animation. Um, and, you know, Brad Pitt walked right past us uh, after, <laughs> after he accepted his Oscar, because we were still, we were there waiting to go on. So it was just, the whole thing was crazy. Um, and I think almost the craziest thing was the red carpet because I've done a lot of live shows. I've done a lot of live concerts. And so that was thrilling and there was high pressure with that performance. But it was almost something that I feel like I've prepared for my entire life. But the walking the red carpet, that was something truly just a once in a lifetime experience. You'll never get to, you know, getting to do that is so unusual. So that was super fun. But the, the whole thing was total magic. It was like a Disney fairy tale. And I got to wear the most amazing couture gowns by two fabulous Norwegian designers. Um, you can go look on my Instagram for that. But it was, um, yeah, really was a dream come true. And I loved every minute of it, as I think you can tell when you see it. <laughs> Question number five. Now, we met at Warpcon in 2019. Uh, have you had any other uh, convention experiences and what's your experience been with the Doctor Who fandom? I did, uh, that was super fun what we got to do actually and it was so lovely to meet you Rich and uh, I think we all had a, a great time at that convention. Um, I met so many wonderful people and this was my first experience on the convention circuit and I, I was so taken aback by the love of Doctor Who fans uh, from, you know, from all over the UK. And um, it was just such an honor to meet everyone and, and to, you know, to have, have a chat. And I've been to Sheffield as well. We did a, a fantastic convention there. Um, and we did our one. And I think that was all I did um, last year. It all feels like centuries ago now. Uh, but yeah, it was just really humbling to meet all the fans and just to hear everyone's opinions about that episode because as you know, as you already mentioned, that particular episode did get a lot of attention because of that frog. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was thrilling and I can't wait to get back out there. Um, yeah, very excited about that. So yeah, can't wait. Question number six. What was it like to work with Jodie Whittaker? And have you seen any of her work before? Oh, wow. It was it was extraordinary working with Jodie and the whole gang, actually, because she in particular, you know, what she has to do at every episode, I, I was just absolutely gobsmacked in so much awe of her talent. She has to learn so much complex text and content and have so many things in her mind at the same time um and that entire cast are so gelled together they are uh, such great friends colleagues um brought so much joy to the set um all of them and jody is exactly as she comes across she's so funny she's so warm she's so incredibly intelligent and um, and I hadn't seen I'd seen clips of her work before, so I knew how good she was. Um, but to watch her work like this up close, and also just how much energy she had left for the you know for us who were just kind of visiting cast, 
I, I, I was really moved by that because, you know, when you're working like that, it's very easy to, to really just focus on the people you work with all of the time. But none of them were like that. They made us feel part of the Doctor Who family. Um, and it was it was a truly, um, really beautiful experience to be be in that show. Question number seven, it has been an unprecedented year. Uh, what's 2020 been like for you? Who? how long have we got? <laughs> um, I, first of all, I just want to say I'm super lucky, okay? So I'm very fortunate in that my husband has a job that's not at risk. He's in, in, in publishing and he's in online publishing, which is even better. Um, and he's very fortunate. He has a, a great job. We have a roof over our head. My, you know, we have food in our bellies and we, we are not wanting for anything. Um, I also have a business that I work along, alongside my career, uh, which I'm very glad I started four years ago in health and beauty products. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, and I think none of us could have anticipated what this year was going to be like or that it was going to last this long um i feel fatigued from from all the depressing news i tend to not watch the news um I, this is a really difficult time and there's a lot that's being asked of people um and my thoughts are really with anyone who's lost a loved one uh, with all of those who don't get to see their loved ones, but also my thoughts are very much with anyone who is really struggling right now, who have lost their work perhaps, who don't know what how they're going to pay their bills. I feel very concerned for a lot of people. Um, for me, you know, I've lost my 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 career is has been completely put on hold more or less. Um, and apart from, you know, voiceover work, which I do, um, there's not a lot of work out there and <laughs> that's my son gaming and there's a lot of competition out there. So, but like I said, you know, it's not been easy, but I can't complain, um, for me, but I, my, my heart goes out to anyone who is having a tough time right now. I am thinking of you and, um, I hope you find a way, um, to come come through this time uh, because this will have to this we will have to you know resume life soon um because there's no <laughs> no money tree so so yeah so we'll all just do our best until then question number eight what's next for lisa stocker in 2021 this is the crazy thing with my career is i never know what's next for me and so I just have an open mind. I also have two children who are also um, uh, actors and they study, they're going to school. Um, and so, the you know, we're all working on doing self-tapes and recording for different things. Um, I'm very excited to have just finished recording a voiceover demo for myself, which means that I can be put up for voiceover work. Um, it's a field I would love to do much more in. I want to learn so many things. I want to learn motion capture, uh, which I've got such a keen interest in. Um, and I really want to focus on um, just creating more work myself. So uh, I'm working on a podcast at the moment that I'm hoping is going to happen. So just watch the space. But um, yeah, I mean, I think with the time such as this, it's really important to find a way through it so that's what I'm doing so I'm you know I'm not sitting on my laurels I'm gonna get out there and make stuff happen question number nine you were in the first ever graduating class of Paul McCartney's Lipper in 1998 I myself uh, went to Liverpool to university to do media studies in 2001 and I loved the city did you love it too yes I love Liverpool. I loved it then. I love it now. Um, it's changed a lot. I went back there um, just a couple of years ago for for a kind of um, to hand out a prize actually to my principal at, at Lipper, 
and I could, it was unrecognizable. But the spirit of the city is so strong. Um, I, I just, yeah, it was a real departure from my hometown in Norway. Um, you know, I came from a very small town, very kind of nothing dramatic ever happened. And I remember ringing my mother the first day at uni where there was a police raid uh, across the street from me and I had never seen anything like it and um, it was a very exciting city um, Liverpoolians are just so welcoming and in fact there's a there's a strong line to Norway there because of obviously the shipping um, and scouse comes from the Norwegian word lapskaus which is a dish uh, where you throw together things that are lying around and you make it into dinner so that's where scouse comes from uh, so yeah, I adore Liverpool and I, I would love to go back soon actually. It's just, yeah, it's such a vibrant city and uh, yeah, love it. Question number 10, our final question. Who is your favourite doctor? Well, that is very easy to answer. Um, that's very easy to answer. My favourite doctor who is of course Jodie. Um, I just think she has nailed that role. I think she made it her own. Uh, it's very challenging, I can I can imagine, when you go into such a legendary part. And because it's an alien, you know, it can be anything. Um, and she's just brought her own quirkiness, her own sense of humor, her beautiful heart, her intelligence to this role. Um, and she's absolutely my favorite doctor and um if she's not your favorite doctor she should be in your top two if you ask me i just think she's absolutely phenomenal and i hope she stays for a very very long time thank you so much rich and thank you everyone uh, i've loved it and uh, yeah have a safe uh christmas everyone stay safe and look after yourselves um and i hope we can all have a lot more fun in 2021. It rhymed. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. And that's it. They are our 10 questions with, and thank you very much to Lisa for agreeing to do them for us. All of Lisa's uh, social media links are down below in the description. So go and follow her. And yeah, hopefully, a lot more to come from Escape from Traken and these 10 questions with. So, until next time, I have been Rich Higton, and I shall see you sometime in the future.